I know the other day you were talking about how the, the locker room is kind of a sacred place. But what's your general message to the guys after after the game today? It's a sacred place, Matt. You just said it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the guys. Uh, they, they left it out there, and I'll just say I'm very proud of them. And um, give, give credit to Miami, give credit to Eric Spolstra, the players. Um, you know, they did a, a, a fabulous job. Um, you know, a lot of respect for Miami and their program, their players, their coaches. Um, so credit to those guys for what they did in this series and what they did tonight. Eric Nave. Uh, after falling in the postseason last year, you guys largely came back with similar strategies and tactics, and you guys made some tweaks and adjustments, but falling in the postseason again, does it feel like you need to make more drastic changes to what it is that you guys do offensively and defensively going forward? Uh, I mean, we just we just played a five-game series, had a you know heck of an effort tonight, the way the guys competed and played. You know, there's going to be time to look at and think, and you know, I think we're always trying to find ways to get better, and, and we'll do that again. Um, but right now, we we just uh, you know had our season um, come to a conclusion, and just got to digest that. In this game, obviously, you guys leaned on Chris a lot in Game Four. Uh, had some jumpers that were short tonight. Obviously, I think you could see his legs were feeling that a little bit. How do you feel about his effort, and then you know, guys like Brooke and Eric that also played a lot. Yeah, Chris. Chris laid everything out there. The whole group. They left everything they had. Um, you know, it's 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 tough. Uh, you know, they're they're trying to do everything they can for each other, um, moving, playing fast, defending, guarding, and um, you got to do it all. And I think uh, you know, Chris. Chris felt good. He want, he actually never wanted to come out. So um, you know, Bled, Brooke, they all they all did um, what we expected of them. They competed. They stayed together. They played together. Um, and we weren't, you know, we couldn't get it done tonight. Jeff Zogut. Mike, did you think there was a discernible difference in the way you guys played in the restart compared to through March 11th? And, and, and maybe what you account for the difference in play? And was that four and a half month layoff just a little bit too much for your team? Well, the four and a half month layoff for our team wasn't any different than any other teams that came here to Orlando to compete and try and, um, you know, be the last team standing. So, um, you know, we had a heck of a year, um, you know, through March 11th, a lot, a lot of good things, a lot of positives, um, you know, and we had our moments here in Orlando, but uh, ultimately, um, you know, uh, we just, we weren't able to, to get it done. So, I, you know, I think everybody's got dealing with the same circumstances. Eric Woodyard. Coach, you've always been the guy to, you know, accept responsibility, you know, never run from excuses or anything like that. But do you feel like guys were, you know, fully prepared just with everything that was going on outside the court, you know, the, the social justice and stances and everything like that? Uh, do you feel like guys were fully prepared to, to, to really lock in mentally to play in the playoffs and shit? Like, where, where, where do you see, like, you know, guys' mindset, you know, this year? Do you feel like they were where they need to be? Yeah, no, I mean, I think. You know, there's no doubt that, you know, every, I think every player, every coach, every team, every organization came down here with, you know, two things that were important to them and, you know, keeping, uh, you know, the voice and the light and fighting for social justice and all those things. Um, we're not any different. Every team's been fighting for it. Everybody's been making it a priority. And then you got to go and win and compete and get your mind where it's supposed to be for the game. And I thought our guys did that. Um, you know, they're fully capable of doing both. and. Uh, that's what's required of, of us today, and our guys' mindset, their focus, their effort, um, I, I, I can only commend them. Sam Anik. But the one difference with your squad, you guys were the ones where George wasn't comfortable playing, but the team ends up deciding not to play. I know you're not a psychologist, but do you feel like the team was able to recover from the uniqueness of, of that choice and the gravity of it? get back to playing the kind of ball they want to. Yeah, there's no doubt that's a that was a big moment. You know, we feel like um, you know, the entire league, all the players, our team, you know, was um, on the right side of history and for our group it was uh, it was significant. Um, but I think, you know, it, it could 
you know, if all of a sudden we played well and won a bunch of games, it could have been our rallying point, right? That would probably be the question if we'd won. Right. Um, I think both things are overplayed and overstated, and um, you got to go out and play. You got to you got to defend. You got to rebound. You got to take care of the ball. You got to make shots, and you got to fight for social justice. You got to find for things you believe in, and so um, certainly we were in the middle of it. Um, it was significant, but. Uh, it's just part of life, and I, I would say, you know, it, it could have helped us and may have helped us. I know it helped us as humans. Zora Stevenson. Well, Coach, with Giannis getting Defensive Player of the Year, you knew he was going to be on an all-defensive team, but Eric Bledsoe, Brooke Lopez, it was announced before the game. Would you mind just speaking on, obviously, you've talked all season about what they mean to this team's defense, but what does it mean for you to see them get recognized for that? And were you able to recognize them in a group setting despite uh, what happened today? Um, no, it was whispered in my ear probably 10, 15, 20 minutes before the game. Um, so I did did uh, you know have that before the game, but we, my guess is uh, Giannis, Brooke, Bled, um, if they know, somebody has whispered it to them since the game ended. We haven't had a chance to acknowledge it as a group, but uh, you know, certainly there's a lot of things from this season that we'll re we will reflect on that were you know hugely positive. Our defense and being you know I think the number one defensive efficiency team in the league again. Um, you know, Giannis on the first team, Brooke and Bled on the second team. It's just it's a uh, it's a huge compliment to what they did um, the entire year. The respect they have around the league, um, and it's really you know we want to be great defensively, and uh, you know we've done that on a consistent basis, and we got to continue that going forward. Two more. Let's go to Kane Pittman. Hey, bud. I know pregame was still up in the air a little bit. Giannis was out there getting some shots up. But I was just wondering. I know that he would have been maybe pushing to play. Was that the case? Did you just have to say, "Listen, you are not okay to go"? And then um, I guess it was the surprise of no one. He's such a competitor. But to see him up, standing up on the bench, cheering the whole game. I mean, what, what can you say about him? Yeah, I'll maybe just touch on the the end part there. Like to see Giannis. Um, I don't know, like he's actually out there rebounding the ball during pregame warm-ups and I think halftime or one or both for sure. And, you know, he's coaching and support his teammates. He, he is there for his teammates. And that's, you know, to the first part of the question, um, you know, to Giannis always wants to play. He's, he's never going to pull himself. And, you know, there was a plan today and, you know, we had to look and put our heads together and listen to Giannis, but listen to our sports performance group led by Troy Flanagan. And, you know, ultimately, John Horse is our GM and myself, and um, we just we couldn't let Giannis, uh, you know, go out there. And he's just he's not ready. He's not healthy. Um, we can't put him at risk. And Giannis would always play. He he wants to be there for his teammates. Um, so really, really hard for Giannis. Um, but I think it was pretty clear um, from everybody, probably except for his perspective, uh, what needed to happen. Dan Wojcicki. But you guys might probably, kind of along Sam's question, maybe had the most unique experience of any team here. Um, I know you said you need to digest things, but obviously the disappointment in, in not being able to, to, to advance matched with the pride of what your team stood for. How does that sit with you? It seems like that'd be complicated. It is. It's a hell of a question. Um, you know, uh, I think what the team stands for and the the uh, I think the character, the humanity to stand and you know be on the right side of history like we did, um, you know, led by George and, and Sterling and um, that was emotional and you know it's such a great group. I think you know winning's important. Um, we had high expectations uh, starting the season, throughout the season, coming here. Um, you always want to realize those expectations, but the relationships, the character, um, what this group did, you know, I think it'd be great if you could have both. But, you know, I think if you're going to choose one, I'd like to be with guys with high character and stand for something. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.